Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Southport. We are into January and I was going to say the January transfer window was open, but we're in non-league. The transfer window is always open. We haven't done any transfers though. I am looking at signing a new left back on loan. I think there's one coming in potentially from Middlesbrough. He's not quite here yet, so he's not going to play against Eastleigh in today's episode. In between episodes, we've done okay. We've got knocked out of the FA Trophy. I say we've done okay. We've gone unbeaten apart from one match against Aldershot. In the last episode, obviously, was the 4-1 victory against Barrow. We had to play them again in the FA Trophy, which we lost which kind of annoyed me. The board weren't particularly pleased. We then played Barnet, a 0-0 draw here, nothing exciting. Then, filed, we turned into one of the world's greatest football teams, winning this one 5-1. Harry Woodward with a goal, Stan Flaherty, Brad Walker and Georgie Newell with a brace. Jack Bridge and Cameron Archer put two past Dagenham and Redbridge to give us a 2-0 victory here. And then against Aldershot, we weren't very good. So, yeah, a 2-0 defeat. It was kind of expected. Morgan Boy's got a 6.3. This is why I'm getting a new left back in. League table-wise, then, we are currently fifth place in the league. We are three points behind second place York. They do have a game in hand, but we're just three points behind. So, uh, yeah, we, we're we still chasing. We're still chasing. I think we're doing a good job. If we can beat whenever we... If we can beat Wrexham, I was going to say. Not Wrexham. If we can beat Eastley, then, obviously, we might be able to climb up the table a little bit more. Wrexham at the top are playing against Barnet, which is a match they could lose. It's a t tough game for them. Torquay and York. Who are York playing? They're playing each other. Look at that. So, it means a victory for us could potentially put us into second place. It can't, can it? Third place. We can't go in second because York and Torquay can't both get zero points. So, I have just finished editing the first six episodes of the, of the season. And, oh my word... I, I genuinely, when I was recording them, I knew, I knew we weren't doing so well when we were recording, but oh my word, it was literally an entire week without winning a game until the Friday. That was just ridiculous. Hopefully, against Eastleigh, we can get our third victory on camera. Obviously, we beat Hartlepool, we beat Barrow. Hopefully, Eastleigh will be our third victors. Victors? Victims. That makes more sense. The starting lineup we're going to go for then against Eastleigh. In goal will be Bradley Watkins, Tom Sams, Ollie Denham and Saul Shotton will be the back three. Harry Woodward and Bradley Bowers will be the two wingbacks. In the middle of the pitch, Brad Walker and Jack Bridge. Stan Flatty, Raul Correa and Cameron Archer will be the strikers. Although, are they the wrong way round? They are definitely the wrong way round. As we see the tactical familiarity just fly up when we put them in their right positions. I have just gone through and offered a whole load of new contracts to people. So, financially, as a club... We are going to be hemorrhaging money a little bit quicker, but it does mean I think Cameron Archer now has a four-year deal, which is perfect. Aaron Sibia's got a couple more years on his contract. Raul Correa also some more years on his contract. Basically, I want to try and tie some of these players down to longer deals because then I can build a team around them, as opposed to at the moment where every summer we just buy three new central defenders, two wingbacks, two central midfielders, an attacker midfielder, and maybe a striker or two. Well, Eastleigh are playing a 4-4-2. Last time we played Eastleigh... I remember Scott Rendell scored against us, and it was very late on in the game, so hopefully he doesn't do the same thing again. I was talking about finances a little bit earlier. Yeah, we have minus £450,000 now in the red, so we do need to try and do something to try and fix our money situation. It would be nice to do something to, you know, actually play a game of football and get some highlights as well. We do have the first highlight. Woodward with a free kick for us towards Raul Correa. Raul Correa with a lovely little dinked header past the Eastley goalkeeper. 24 minutes on the clock. We're 1-0 up already. Look at this. All of a sudden, we're going to win every game on camera between now and the end of the season. Which will be good, because if we get into the playoffs, that means we'll win the playoffs as well. I wouldn't say we've been the better side either. Eastley have had seven shots. We've had just three. Well, now it's up to five. But no real highlights to talk about apart from the goal. Just before half-time, we potentially have something else going on. Stan Flaherty with the ball, plays it forward, finds Brad Walker. Now, Bridge takes a little touch across to Bradley Bowers on that left-hand side. He's cut inside as well. Bradley Bowers, he's gone for a cross of all things. And Cameron Archer at the back post has put it in with a very, very tight angle. Still managed to do it. 2-0 up against Eastley. Looking good. You can tell that it's a brand new day that I'm recording this video. The last... First, well, the first six episodes of season one were all recorded, season two even, were all recorded in one big batch. I've had a sleep, I've done some things, I've come back a little bit calmer, I think. No changes at the break for us, I'd like to get a third, a third would be nice, Bridge might need to come off. 
I'm pretty sure we very rarely get highlights before the 60 minute mark in the second half, don't we? Finn with the ball for Eastley. Keller Dunn, lots and lots of space for Keller Dunn to run into. Gets past his man, no he doesn't, Woodward with a great tackle. Oh my word, this match engine. This is, I'm still on the beta. I don't know whether the full one has been released. I record everything in bulk as you probably worked out by now. But yeah, I'm still on the beta. But this beta match engine, there's some, there's some problems. There's definite problems with it. Because... I know that could happen, but it happens far too often. Right, we're going to do our change. Bridge off. Clayton Lewis is going to come on. We're going to keep you that way round, I think. Lewis has been out with an injury, so it wasn't recommended to play him more than 45 minutes. So he's only going to get about half an hour. Boyce with a free kick. We've got 20 minutes left to play. Eastley coming forward. Bowers heads all the way back to Watkins, who doesn't pick it up. I mean, it was a header. He was allowed to. Cameron Archer gets the ball. He's running forward. He's going to go for goal from a long way out. And Cameron Archer, what a finish that is from the former Aston Villa man. Puts it into the bottom corner. His 20th goal of the season. He's going to pick up the golden boot. He is going to pick up the golden boot award, isn't he? Is it a golden boot in the Van Rama National? I don't know. We've moved up to third place if everything stays this way. York are winning their match by the looks of it. So they will be three points clear ahead of us. But we are closing the gap on Wrexham. Full-time whistle's about to go. I've only done the one substitution. There it is. The full-time whistle does go a 3-1 victory against Eastley. Cameron Archer, the star of the show. Raul Correa also getting a goal and an assist to his name. All in all, that was a pretty good performance. I'm telling you now, we're going to win every game between now and the end of the season. It's going to happen. We've moved up into third place. What else happened? So York beat Torquay. They destroyed Torquay. 3-0. Wrexham. What did Wrexham do? Did they even play? I don't think they played. They didn't play. That would explain why we closed the gap on them. Cameron Archer has played 25 starts. Scored 20 goals so far. He is an absolute beast at this level of football. Four-star current ability, five-star potential. Like I said, he's got a two-year deal now. So if we don't go up this season, I think he's going to stick with us for another year. And he'll do just basically do the same stuff once again in the Van Arama National League. I want him, end of this season, I want him to get 40 goals. It's a tall ask. I'm just wondering whether he's causing our financial problems. £160 a goal. £160 a goal. He also gets £210 an appearance. So, oh, I don't want to do the maths, but we're going to do it. We've given Cameron Archer £8,500 just through goals and appearances. That's, that's a lot of money. I mean, obviously, there's, there's still more that he's going to be getting. He's getting his weekly wage as well. He's getting, he's getting a fair amount of money, isn't he? He's getting a lot of money. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. Next episode, where will we turn up? It's probably going to have to be one of the big boys, isn't it? It's probably going to be Harrogate. Harrogate and Torquay. So maybe tomorrow could be a double upload day because we're going to have to play Harrogate. I think we're probably going to have to do Torquay on camera as well. Teams in and around us I want to be showing because if we can pick up points against them, that'll be good. Although, those are the matches that we're more likely to lose. I don't, I don't know why I always do this. I kind of commit to doing a, a match on camera, and then I don't necessarily want to do it. So, next episode, who knows? It will be somewhere in February. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2020 with Southport. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back tomorrow with more Football Manager.